Good morning, everyone. Wow. All I can say is you can tell God is up in this place today. Even when the enemy tried to mess with that sounding system, God prevailed through those reactions. Um, again, I'm Amy Heiser Myers, and uh, for me, uh, being an educator, like many educators, I'm a rule follower. So I always had received my uh, mammograms, and actually, I started receiving them at age 36 before the um, recommendation moved to 40. So there was quite a historical longitudinal background on um, my breasts, and they knew they were dense, but back even five years ago, we didn't have the approval for the automatic ultrasound recommendation like we do nowadays. So I had gone in for my um, annual mammogram, which was a 3D mammogram, back in, it was July of 2019. And the first week in October, so we're talking less than 10 weeks later, I was in the shower after a heavy workout, and I felt a lump under my arm. First time I felt a lump, nothing on my breast, but under my arm. I knew immediately that was not a good sign, and um, I have a relationship that goes back to having that relationship with your doctors, and being um, a, a, your own medical advocate. And the stance that I've taken through this journey is really, you know your body better than anybody else, and you have to be your own medical advocate. Mm -hmm. So um, being the person that I am, and I don't just turn off the leadership in the school, I'm like that in every domain. And I know that a lot of people sometimes when they get into different environments, whether it's a doctor's office or another office, they may not be necessarily the same advocate as they are in other environments. Well, for me, I'm pretty consistent. So I called up my GP and I said, I got a lump. I don't want to waste my time seeing you. You're not going to be able to fix it. Get me into no, honestly, this, this is how I am. You need to get me into imaging. I know it's not good. So within less than 48 hours, I was imaged and biopsied. Um, I was not too particularly concerned. I've had biopsies, ironically, on the opposite breast, but you always come back benign, um, cysts, just fatty tissue, nothing alarming. So I had a couple of clips, but my, my alternate breast. So um, within five days, uh, the pathology came back. I'll never forget, I was at school. Um, at my desk, and my doctor called, and ironically, my GP's wife, many years earlier, had died of breast cancer. So he was pretty upset when he called me, and just, I'm so sorry, it's positive. And not think, I'm like, positive for what? He said, for cancer. I said, what? And then at that time, your world stops. For any of you survivors out there, you know exactly when you have that call, that conversation, when it happened to you. And at that point, I was able to decompress enough from myself. And sometimes when you're in a leadership role, you're able to separate yourself from yourself, almost like an out-of-body experience. It just kicks in. It kicked in. And I said, well, I know they biopsied multiple areas. Did they all come back positive? He said, yes, they did. And I said, I immediately want that pathology report because I need to start next steps. Not, hey, we're going to wait for you to schedule this. I'm taking control of this situation. And knowing that it was positive, and part of that was two lymph nodes, I already knew it spread to at least the lymph nodes. Did not know how far it had spread in my body. So at that point, I had the pathology report within, um, within minutes. And I already at that point knew that the, the doctor practice that diagnosed me was not necessarily the practice I was going to get treated in. And I made up that mind on my own. And within 13, bus not even business days, 13 calendar days from the time of diagnosis, I had my port in me and I was receiving my first round of chemotherapy. Yeah. Part of that was me pushing, getting in, making sure that the PET scans, all the imaging that I needed, and that's where we knew outside of, I'm, I'm clinically what they consider um, locally, regionally advanced breast cancer, meaning it spread to my lymph nodes, and based on the PET scan, it went to one mammary gland, but there was no evidence it had gone anywhere else. So at that point, um, my treatment plan is what I consider the full onslaught, uh, um, cancer treatment plan. It started with rounds of chemotherapy and just for those of you who are survivors, I'm ER, PR positive, 
um, HER2 low. So with that being said, um, my chemotherapy was ACT, and unfortunately I was not a candidate for the cold cap because when you have what they nicknamed the Red Devil, the cold cap, at that time at least, would not keep my hair. So um, I went ahead and I did chemotherapy. Then I had a full mastectomy of both breasts. And then I had six weeks, five weeks of radiation with a week, what they call the booster. You heard that in the presentation. And then I had to wait a year for the reconstruction surgery. So um, when I look at the time of diagnosis to the end of my treatment plan, it was literally nine, nine months, which really gave me comfort because that's kind of Job's um, journey was nine months in the Bible. Um, or job, um, job, pardon me, Job. So, um, <laughs> so with, with that being said, it, it really opened me up to knowing the importance of your own voice and making sure you work with the team of doctors that are working with you. I have a wonderful, wonderful relationship with my oncologist, my breast surgeon, and my oncology radiologist. But the person at this stage, five years out, that I work closest with is my oncologist. Um, she and I um, see each other every three months, and we she is always open to any information that I bring to her to discuss, as she is open to discussing new information for me. Um, throughout this uh, cancer journey, I did uh, get genetically tested, and I did have a mutation of a lesser known mutation called CHECK2. And CHECK2 does increase your breast, uh, your risk of breast cancer and a slight risk of colon cancer. So I cannot stress the importance of all of your diagnostic testing. And even though my breast cancer was not due to me not following recommendations at the time, for, um, for um, diagnostic testing, what it did do when I started sharing my story is there's a whole bunch of people where their life is busy and almost too busy to take care of themselves. Well, God did not call us to be busy. He called us to bear good fruit. And part of that good fruit is taking care of you and your family. And we cannot take care of our family if we are not taking care of ourselves. And I was astonished at the number of principals who are highly educated. They, at a minimum, have a graduate degree. Many of them have doctorate degrees. Saying, you know, Amy, after hearing your story, looking around the room, you're, you're 45 years old and you're, you're stage 3C. I haven't had a mammogram in two years. I've been too busy. Just taking those ashes of such a horrifying diagnosis, if it is fixing anyone to get their diagnostics sooner and regularly, that is the voice that I want to bring to the table now. And knowing that you have a feeling, go with your gut feeling, and if your gut feeling is different, get it than what, your, what the medical plan is, get a second opinion. We're entitled to that. Do not be marginalized when you're in a medical setting, you have to fully have your questions answered and be comfortable with the treatment plan that is, is in, in, in place for you. And now as a survivor, and I can speak for myself, there's not a day that doesn't go by where I'm not reminded I have cancer. Whether it's the scars, the changes to my body, the way I feel, uh, the post-treatment plan, but I am very appreciative and with the cancer diagnosis, I, I like to refer to myself as maybe a Sunday Christian. Monday through Saturday, maybe not so much so. <laughs> just Sunday. Maybe it wasn't even every Sunday. And I just am very strong-willed, and I do not think for a moment this was put upon me as punishment or for not doing something right. But I do believe that it is my wake-up call to have life balance. And for those of you who don't have that life balance, this did it for me. And then I had to reprioritize because right now my survival rate, or my survival rate is about 62%. So right now, whenever I'm approached a situation at work or some other situation where it's pretty heavy duty, but it's not life and death, would you jump off this building if I told you you had a 62% chance of surviving? Most people would say those odds aren't high enough for me to jump off this building. Well, those are my daily odds. 
and I'm controlling the environment that I'm in to ensure those odds stay as highly close to that 62% as I can have it be. And now that I consider myself a Sunday through Sunday Christian woman, I also speak that truth, whether it's his principle of the year, and this is how good God is. I was no better a principal in the year 21-22 than I have been since I was appointed principal in 2010. It is just God's timing that he chose me to be principal of the year after my cancer diagnosis because I use that platform much differently than I would have if I had been principal of the year any time before the cancer diagnosis. And I have been able to talk at many more engagements about being a self-advocate for your medical needs, what it means to be a survivor, and how to... Um, give glory to our Lord for the healing that he has done in, in his children. And for me, if I would have thought five years ago, I'd ever be sitting here on a Saturday morning talking about this journey and praising God. I don't think I ever praised God publicly five years ago. This is how I took those ashes and made it beautiful. And I just want to thank the opportunity to come here today. I know that um, the the committee has been trying um, to get me for the past couple of years. The calendar just never worked out, but this year it did. And I don't know of a better place I would like to be spending my Saturday morning than right here. So